Hello, good afternoon. Chris Well here with Harper's Club and today we're going to taste some caviar. This company was started by Chef Thomas Keller and former CEO of Sterling and Tsar Nikolai Caviar, Shoshin Bishop. So quality is totally taken care of here. Uh, really excited to run through the gamut of all the different caviar styles that they offer. Uh, and you can't have caviar without champagne. So we're going to pair it with two different champagnes offering contrasting styles. Here we have Jean-Pierre Lunois. This is their composition, 100% Chardonnay Blanc de Blanc from Les Menil Sauge, which is a Grand Cru vineyard, one of only a few in Champagne, with a very low dosage, 0.5 grams. Lean and mean, just like I like it. Over here, we have uh, Charton Taillé Saint Anne. This comes from a small village in the Montagne de Rennes called Merfi, and this is a blend of largely Pinot Noir, 50%, with 40% Chardonnay and 10% Pinot Meunier. Uh, there's a little bit of barrel fermentation that happens in this guy as well, so it's gonna give us that richness. That'll be a total counterbalance uh, to this guy over here. So first off, in tasting caviar, uh, you have to know how to taste caviar. To taste uh, caviar correctly and to really assess the quality level, uh, it's a process called pearling. And what you do is you'll take this whole bite uh, into your mouth uh, and you'll use your tongue to basically spread it and crush all the eggs over the roof of your mouth. You'll get a, a feel for the richness, the nuttiness, uh, and the overall quality of the caviar. All right, we're gonna start off with the classic. Mm. You know, this is their entry level caviar. Um, and as good as this one is, I'm really excited to run through the whole lineup here. It's smooth, it's buttery, um, it's not too salty, it's not too aggressive or assertive. Sometimes caviars, and especially higher end caviars, can be very assertive. Next up to that here, we have the Royal. Uh, here we have uh, eggs that range from a light brown to uh, a light gray. Um, and let's check it out. A little creamier and more buttery. Uh, in flavor than the classic. Um, probably about the same salinity, but there's a little bit of a, a nice kind of ever so delicate kind of fishy assertiveness that's coming in on the back end, which I actually really like. All right, we move into the Supreme. So this is their highest grade California white sturgeon caviar. It's everything that the, uh, the two previous were combined together, really, really subtle on any kind of fishy flavors. It's all about the creaminess and the butteriness here. Really, really exceptional, and I can see the quality in this one for sure. All hand-picked lots, it really shows through. Uh, this is their Siberian. Whenever I think of caviar, I do think of Russia. Very tight beads here, very small eggs. They're very compact. They're kind of like a dark, uh, uh, dark brown, but um, what I notice right away is a very small uh, bead of caviar. Everything about this is about being understated. It's very delicate, very sublime. It's not as rich and buttery as the last one, the Supreme, but it has a very kind of poignant um, uh, salinity to it. It's absolutely fantastic. And um, I think this would probably do well counterbalanced with maybe a potato chip and some creme fraiche. Next here we have their hybrid. This is a combination of Kaluga and Amur sturgeons. Uh, it's a little bit more golden, lighter in color. Uh, egg size I would say is medium, uh, not as small as the last one, uh, but it has a very kind of shimmery, almost delicious eat me right now look to it. So I will do that. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, the, the larger egg, the, the salinity kind of saltiness is way down on this. Um, it's very accessible by those that maybe are off put by that, that salty flavor. Um, it has this nice kind of nuttiness to it that I wasn't getting out of some of the other caviars. Nuttiness is something that typically will come into play with higher quality caviars. And this one definitely um, hits and checks all the boxes there. Now we've reached the Grand Puba. The Ocetra. Uh, this is uh, a very famous caviar known worldwide 
and um, I'm really excited to taste their top of the line. All of these have been fantastic, but the Ocetra is uh, what I've been waiting for. You know, it's uh, the classic saying, you get what you pay for, and it's definitely the case here. This has the right amount of like saltiness and brininess, the nuttiness and creaminess and butteriness, they're all kind of hitting along the same plane here, uh, working in harmony. And that works. So starting from the beginning here, we have the classic. This is uh, smooth, creamy, and soft. This runs uh, $80 for a 30 gram 10. This, what you see here, is only a 15 gram. So that's, that's a good value to get uh, those in there. Next, we move on to the Royale. Uh, this is uh, all white sturgeon, also smooth and creamy, but kind of this uh, to a higher degree. This, these run uh, $100 per 30 gram. Uh, then we move into the Supreme. The Supreme is, uh, comes in at 120 per 30 grams, and this is one that becomes more rich and nutty and firm. Next, we move into the Siberian, and this one uh, is the newest in their line. Uh, I don't have the pricing quite yet, but I assume it'll probably be uh, in the kind of 120 strata per 30 grams. Uh, next, we have the hybrid. This one was the crossbreed of Kaluga and Amora Sturgeon. This was uh, definitely nutty. It's lighter in style with these kind of firm eggs that really pop when you pearl it in your mouth. And then we have the creme de la creme. Uh, there's no uh, secret why it's half empty. This one we just can't keep our hands off of. This is 145 per 30 grams uh, and very, very nice. If I didn't mention that, this is 135 over here. So now, which champagne is better? You know, is it the Blanc de Blanc, the really low dosage, kind of lean style here? Or is it the, the richer style, partially barrel fermented, you know, Pinot Noir and, and red grape dominant uh, Charton Taillet. Let's check it out. We're gonna start off with this guy here, Lean and Mean, and I'm using the Sicilian, or excuse me, the Siberian. Okay. The saltiness really gets um, amplified with the uh, Blanc de Blanc style. Now we'll try it with the Merfi. Wow, that's really a toss up. Um, the, the salinity that was accentuated here is slightly downplayed here, but the assert assertiveness of the fish and the fish eggs and the caviar gets brought up. Uh, so it's really interesting. If you love caviar and you're, you're, it's not your first rodeo, uh, I think you'll really like uh, a richer style champagne. If you're looking, if, it's, if it's, this is your first rodeo, uh, I think something that's super dry, super lean and mean like this, Jean Lunois Blanc de Blanc from Les Manil, this is your guy. It kind of totally scrubs the palate. It accentuates um, the salinity, but that's it. And it rinses it right off your palate, and you're ready to go for another one. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the hybrid, which is a drastically different caviar. Uh, here we had uh, the, the blend of two different white sturgeon caviar, uh, and this was our Siberian. So as you can see, you know, this is a much darker, smaller uh, beads and eggs there. Here, bigger, nuttier, golden in color. Uh, I'm quite certain there's gonna be a different outcome here, but let's see. Oh, that's nice. This, again, turns up the salinity on the caviar and in, in, in the most amazing way possible because you still get the, the nuttiness and the butteriness on the palate. Really, really good. I don't know. I think it's gonna be a, a, a tough one here to beat that flavor profile and that combination. Yeah, you know, they're both good, but this is, uh, I think, a clear winner um, with that kind of more buttery flavor. It needs this probably elevated acidity, this laser beam-like quality that Blanc de Blancs always have. And um, this hybrid Blanc de Blanc, that's the pairing. So 
Uh, it's no surprise, and everyone in the kind of food and beverage industry knows this. If you really want to, say, judge a wine, look at how they make their village wines, uh, their entry-level wines. And here we're going to do the same thing, but with their caviar. This is the, the very entry-level classic uh, caviar that they offer. Again, we're going to start with the Blanc de Blanc. Mm, quite nice. Almost makes that uh, a little sweeter, which is really nice. Uh, let's see how it does with the Chacontay. Gosh, I don't know. I mean, this one uh, accentuates more of the buttery and the nuttiness of it, and this one accentuates the solidity. I'd almost have to say it's a tie, which means it goes with everything. I mean, isn't that nice that their entry level is so uh, universal? Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. This was a real treat. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, both on the education side and to understand a little bit more about this company. I know that I sure have. Um, you can get these uh, caviars uh, directly from their website, uh, regisova.com. I will make sure that we include a link. Uh, and if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about Harper's Club and what we do, uh, please reach out to me. We'll have a link there as well. Uh, just so you know, these champagnes are very moderately priced. Uh, the Jean-Pierre Lunois composition comes in at $50 a bottle, and the Charton Terrier Merfi Saint-Anne comes in at $55. Enjoy. Stay safe out there.